How's it going everyone? It's Abdallah here, back again with another exciting new Pokemon Snap Tips and Tricks tutorial video. Today's video is showcasing exactly where to find the 20 brand new Pokemon that are in the new first wave of Pokemon DLC. Now, we're going to go through and we're going to cut exactly where to find all of them. Of course, you guys can experiment around with different poses. We're just going to show you guys the basics so that you guys can complete your photo decks with 234 Pokemon. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Now, before we get started, we want to make sure we cover our basis for those of you guys that don't know make sure your game is updated to version 2.0 simply by going over to the home screen clicking on new pokemon snap pressing the plus button on your controller and then clicking on software update via the internet provided that you're connected to the internet you guys should be on version 2.0 now other than that the only other prerequisites is going through the main game now, I'm not really sure exactly how far you have to beat the main game in order to unlock these three new areas because I've already beaten the game through there. So, if you guys are having trouble getting these unlocked, try going through, beating the main story and everything like that, and then coming back to the video and learning all about these. All right, let's get the show on the road. Here we go. So as soon as you start up the game, you're going to need to go into the Florio Nature Park during the day, and you're going to need to find a specific tree that you're going to need to scan in order to get the shrink size available. Right over here by the Pidgeot, you'll be able to see this specific tree. Scan that, and then it will lead somewhere. Our friend Phil will say, hey, heads up. Let's go over here and use the shrink functionality and find out what's new and exciting with the specific size path. Now, you have to do this in order to unlock the path so that you can continuously play through the path and get even more Pokemon. There's only three Pokemon to find in this specific area, and your first one is going to be the Shroomish right over here. After you're done riding the Emolga, you'll see a whole bunch of Shroomish right on the side. Now, this is the Dancing Trio, and you'll be able to find these Shroomish also sprinkled all throughout the other area as well, but this is going to be one of your first instances, so take as many pictures as you can. Now, once you're done with that level, you can start the entire side path all over again and focus more on the left side at the very beginning, right next to the Dodrio. And once you're able to see that, scan right over that way and Phil will say there's a new path available, which will lead you to our next Pokemon and last Pokemon in this area, which is going to be a Snorlax. Now, he's going to be sleeping. You can use the flute in order to wake him up a little bit later on in the run. But my favorite part is to toss as many apples as you can straight inside of his mouth and get some cool poses from there as well. After beating the side path during the day, you'll unlock side path during the night on level 1. Now over here, there's going to be one Pokemon to find, and that is going to be Fungus. He's right on the main path. If you focus on the left or the right sides, you'll be able to see him at the very, very beginning. He's not hidden at all, and there are many of them to scope out. So definitely take a look, and if you're lucky, you might get them to use their Spore Attack. Now that we've found all three Pokemon within the side path, let's jump into the river and show you guys exactly where to find all seven of the Pokemon. Now, right over here, you'll be able to find Feraligatr just floating in the water, so definitely take a picture of him as you see him swimming around. If you take a look on your left-hand side, you'll be able to see Psyduck and some Ipom, but if you don't get a picture of him now, you'll get another opportunity a little bit later on. Now our next Pokemon is going to be none other than this very awesome Tropius. These guys are littered all over the place, so definitely take a look at their banana beards and keep on going. And like I said earlier, if you didn't get your chance at Psyduck, you'll be able to get Psyduck swimming around in the river. And uh, yeah, so just shoot a picture of him right over there. He's definitely able to be fed. You can throw some apples at him and he'll be all set and ready to go. Our last new Pokemon for the daytime is going to be found in level 2. That is going to be Gyarados. Now, if you guys have been paying attention to the waterfall, you'll notice that there's a Crystal Bloom over there. So if you light that thing up, you'll be able to see Gyarados come swimming around. Now, continue on through the level, through these rapids over here. I like to throw an Illumina Orb at that Crystal Bloom that way. And I like to go into my settings and make sure that I've got 6-shot Burst on because he's going to come out fast and very furious. So... Focus your aim a little bit higher than the very tip top over this way and then just keep on firing and you'll be able to get the fastest Gyarados cool shot ever. Man, that is intense. Now in case you guys didn't get that shot by speeding up your specific Neo 1, you can turn over this way and Gyarados is just going to be chilling at the very end of the level.
Our next area is going to be the River at Night for level 2. Now level 2 is going to give us a couple new Pokemon. Simply put, all you have to do is head on over to the right side after the Gyarados Waterfall and analyze these little bushes over here or these ferns that are hanging over there. It'll open up a brand new path that will give you two brand new Pokemon and our very first Pokemon is going to be none other than Drillbur. Now he's going to be right on this ledge over here. There's going to be many opportunities for you to find him, uh, such as finding him in the daytime and even more so a little bit later on in the cave. Outside of Drillbur, if you keep on going through this little narrow waterway within the cave, you'll be able to find two Kleffa that are cute right over here. You can find them, and they have a Crystal Bloom over there, which allows them to dance. And if you take a picture of them while they're dancing, you'll be able to get their very awesome four-star pose. Likewise, with this nighttime activity, if you start over right at the beginning and start throwing Illumina Orbs at every single one of these iPom over here, you're going to be able to get your very own Ursa Ring picture. And likewise, if you guys didn't already take a look at Cleffa at the very beginning, you can also get a cute pose right over this way. So now that you have taken a look at throwing Illumina Orbs at the iPom, there was one over there and then here's a second one, these two iPom are going to move ahead and then start making fun of the Ursa Ring. But of course the Ursa Ring is going to get really, really upset at that. So scan them, play some music, throw some Illumina Orbs over here and you're going to be able to get this Ursa Ring that comes straight out over here and starts sharpening his claws at this upcoming tree. He also does a whole bunch of things throughout the other areas, so make sure that you guys follow him as you're going on in the level. Last but not least, we have the Barren Badlands. Now, we're going to jump into the daytime level 1, and we're going to show you guys exactly what you can find within these last areas here. Now, there's going to be a ton of Pokemon right off the bat that are going to be brand new, so definitely take a look at them. You've got a Diglett over there, there's a Tepig, there is a lot happening. Now, if you keep on going even further to the left over here, you'll be able to find your first of many Crustle that you'll find within the desert. And of course, keep on moving forward and you'll find the Poison Swamp area where it's home to many coughing and you'll be able to find some Swalot as well. Definitely throw some berries over at him and watch him gulp those things right up. Next up is going to be the Badlands during the day on level 2. This is where you're going to find a very, very cute Rockruff. I love this little guy. He's so great. Yeah, he's awesome. So find him at the very beginning, feed him a berry, and watch him go on his hind legs for you. If you keep on moving forward, you'll be able to see a Crystal Bloom over here. If you hit this early enough, a Meteor will strike into the ground, knocking over this rock over here, blocking the geyser, and allow you to actually go through and do a different path. So if you take the leftmost path, this will lead you to more Pokemon spawns. You'll be seeing right over here as you're climbing up, your very first instance with a Scolipede. So snap as many pictures as you can over here and get some good ones. There's also a Crystal Bloom over there if you guys want even more poses. All right, of course, next up is going to be doing the opposite path, where if you go a little bit later and you play the polka flute or the song, you'll be able to find a Salazzle on the rightmost path. Uh, definitely play the song over here. You'll definitely see her shake her hips, and you can also feed her along the way. So get some good pictures and good poses of Salazzle there. All right, now here we go. This one's going to be Badlands at night level two. This is where our last two Pokemon are going to be. Now there's no split path in this level, so keep on going forward right before the Poison Caves and you'll be able to find a Gliscor. Now this guy is floating right on the archway. If you throw a Pokemon food at him, he will absolutely jump around and fly all the way throughout the level. If you keep on going further, you'll find many different Gliscor. So consider, Speeding past him, turning around, and getting a nice picture of his face. And the final Pokemon of the video is going to be none other than the mythical Pokemon Zeraora, found at the very, very beginning. As you can see over here, we threw some apples at him on the entire left side. And while we're doing that, we are going as slow as we can so that Zeraora can climb the mountains all the way up top left. While we're doing this and going slow by zooming into our target over here, we're trying to wake up the Tyranitar and make him cause a sandstorm. You can see over here he'll slam his tail down, and then if he performs a sandstorm while you've already thrown an apple at Zeraora, Zeraora is going to come over here and do a duel with him. 
Now, some of you may be having a hard time with this one where uh, Tyranitar actually moves forward and attacks the Crustle. That's simply put because you're going too fast. You want to be able to go slow. So get these guys as early as possible and go slow along the way. So now that we have that, the Crystal Bloom is not necessary at all. Zeraora is going to be facing off against the Tyranitar. And as soon as you turn the corner around this Crustle over here, they're going to start their duel. You don't need to throw any Illumina Orbs or anything like that, unless you want some really, really cool neon colors on them. But anyway, Zeraora is going to jump over Tyranitar, and he's just going to watch. And this is the part where you want to get out your six-shot burst, because there's tons of opportunities for him to go. So you'll see over here that he powers up into his new form, and he is ready to attack. He's going to run straight at Tyranitar, do an awesome flip over him, and then get ready to charge up and do one of the most amazing shots in the entire game. Boom! That picture right there is your four-star Zera Aura picture. So wow, what did you think? That is the entire first pack of DLC. Is there going to be more? I'm not sure, but I certainly hope so. There we go. He's running away off into the sunset. Catch you later, Zara Aura. And if this video helped you out, be sure to smash that like button and share the video with a friend.